Welcome to the third video in this series. Um, this video is about recursive incremental view maintenance, a special technique uh, developed in the TV Toaster project. So I'll give an intuition first that is outside of the context of databases and database queries. Uh, we will talk about functions on the reels, let's say, and uh, the important thing is that we are creating an analogy and we will be able to replace these functions on the reels to data, uh, by database queries on database relations later. So given such a function f, uh, we define delta f of x uh, to be f of x plus 1 minus f of x. So uh, the change of f of x as we increment x by 1. This is of course a very uh, special case of our general incremental view maintenance idea. We are only talking about the case that we actually increment x by exactly 1. So of course on the increment of x by 1 we can say f of x plus equals delta f of x if we have a materialized version of f of x, an old version, and we want to quickly get to a new version of that. So that is the idea of a materialized view that we incrementally maintain using the delta query delta f of x. Now, if f is a polynomial, then we can define a degree, and the degree of delta f of x is known to be uh, lower by 1 than the degree of f of x unless uh, the degree becomes zero. So the degree of delta f of x is the maximum of zero and the degree of f of x minus one. So there is a k such that delta to the k, the k delta of f, is zero. That means I take the delta of the delta of the delta of the delta, etc. of f. Now let's take a concrete example. Let's assume we want to study the, the function g of x uh, equals 3x squared. Now we can actually pre-compute the delta of g of x, and that is 6x plus 3. That means as we increment x by 1, we have to add 6x plus 3 to 3x squared to get 3 times x plus 1 squared. Now, we can take the delta of this delta query, that means the delta of delta g of x, and we call this delta to the uh, second uh, g of x, and that delta is 6. That means as I increment x by 1, 6x plus 3 is incremented by 6. And then I can take a third uh, delta, the delta of uh, 6 as I increment x by 1, which of course 6 uh, doesn't depend on, on x, so this delta is 0. So here we're done. We've had a second degree uh, polynomial, uh, 3x squared, and with these three reasonable deltas, um, uh, we, we, we can completely capture, so to say, what's going on incrementally. Now, why do we do this? So what you can do now is we can actually materialize a view of each of these four functions. Well, the fourth we don't have to do because it's always zero. So we can materialize g of x, delta g of x, and delta squared of g of x. And assume x is currently zero. Then g of x is zero, delta g of x is three, and delta squared of g of x is six. Now, if we want to uh, increment x by one, we go from zero to one. What do we have to do uh, to compute a new version of this, this tuple, this current value for each of those views. But it's actually very easy. We don't have to re-evaluate these functions anymore, but all we have to do is for every value, we take the sum of the value just above it and the value just right above it. So in this case, 0 plus 3. The old value plus the delta for it is 3. We get, for delta g of x, we get 6, 3 plus 6, which is 9. And for delta squared, we get 6 plus 0, which is 6. Of course, 6 is constant, it will always be 6. So if you now, for example, want to increment uh, x by 1, getting 2, all you have to do is take 3 plus 9 is 12. 9 plus 6 is 15. Well, and 6 remains 6. If I, for example, wanted to increment x yet, yet once more time from 2 to 3, I take 12 plus 15 is 27. 15 plus 6 is 21. 6 remains 6. And so on. If I wanted to go to 4, I would get 48, 27, and 6. Now, all this is very obvious and very easy, and uh, one may ask what the point of this is. Well, we could relatively cheaply recompute 3x squared, uh, saying just, you know, 3 times 4 times 4 is 48. Um, and that's not so much different, maybe, from uh, actually summing up 27 plus 21. But note that uh, now, for each value, we're computing one sum rather than we're computing the entire function. So this can be cheaper. 
Of course, we are doing multiple views, so in, in total we are computing three sums here. Um, uh, and well, actually in this case, since delta squared is constant, we are talking about two sums. Now, is two sums cheaper than uh, the product of uh, three values? Um, well, maybe for the integers uh, that we are doing here, this doesn't really matter. But we are going to talk later about database queries, where multiplication corresponds to a join, and, uh, and uh, summation corresponds to union of relations, or even in the case of aggregate queries, an actual sum. And of course, a sum of numbers, of aggregate num values, is much cheaper than a join. A join is a key operation databases, and it's quite expensive. Now, the cool thing here is we're getting rid of all the multiplications, of all the joins. We have found a way of evaluating these polynomial queries that may have also all kinds of joins and doing only summations and only unions. There's only plus here in the way we evaluate all these functions. There's no multiplication. And that is the key trick here. So we've actually made uh, uh, in incremental view this much cheaper by recursively compiling, so to say, these delta queries. We're not just computing a single delta query. But we're using the intuition that, well, if maintaining g of x with delta g of x is cheaper than recomputing g of x, well, then probably uh, incrementally maintaining delta g of x using a delta squared g of x is even cheaper, right? So if the idea is delta queries make things cheaper, we only compute the change rather than recomputing everything, we can actually apply this to the SQL recursively. We materialize all these views and we use those views to materialize each other and incrementally maintain each other efficiently. So that's the key idea of recursive incremental view maintenance. Classical incremental view maintenance just uses a single delta query. We take this further, we're doing delta processing for each of these views, uh, even for delta queries that we also materialize. Now, when can we use this for database queries? So the idea is that we do some very aggressive recursive incremental view maintenance of database queries. So we're not just incrementally maintaining using materialized view Q, but we also uh, materialize delta Q, delta squared Q, delta free Q, depending on, on, on the query, how many, uh, like uh, what its degree is. So conceptually, we will at statically at compile time before we start looking at data and evaluating it, pre-compile a program that materializes all these views and produces triggers that will fire whenever something changes and that these triggers will update all those views. So to incrementally maintain a materialized view of Q, we're going to compute delta Q, uh, both for double insertion and deletions, um, and then uh, we will uh, set the incremental view maintenance code for Q to be Q plus equals or plus or minus equals delta Q, depending on whether it's an in insertion or a deletion. And then we will recursively compile delta Q. We use the same compile factor. It means we will also materialize delta Q and uh, compute a delta for that delta Q. We will uh, set up incremental view maintenance code for delta Q. And then again, for the deltas that we have just produced, to the, the auxiliary deltas, the delta squared, we will recursively again compile and so on. Now, when are we allowed to do this? We have just seen before that we are allowed to do this for the integers or for the reals in general. Uh, because there we've got polynomials and the delta of a polynomial has lower degree. For that reason, this compilation uh, iteration terminates. And this is a requirement for us, of course. So we need two requirements for our query language. One is that this query language must be closed undertaken delta. That means for if the query is the query language, then the delta of the query language must also be expressible in the same query language. So that we can recursively do this thing. And the second requirement is that there is some k such that the kth delta of of any query is constant or fixed. So it doesn't depend on the change anymore. 